Hey, uh, I think this is the third time. I think you can maybe hear me now. I hope you can. Um, I'm going to, I've produced a PDF file with a brochure with all the materials that I use and the paints that I use so that you can have a look at it. I will save this video onto Facebook and onto YouTube so that you can save it there. I'm getting pings from somewhere. So I'll save this PDF file onto, onto Facebook, onto YouTube. You can go through it and you can and you can look. I'm getting ticks but I can't see anybody whether anybody is on, but I'm just gonna rub it on and carry on. So here's the book. This is the book. I'll just take it back to the beginning. Right, so this is the book. You'll be able to get this as a PDF file and you'll be able to see it. I've got a thumbs up, so I presume someone can hear me now. So this is the book. I've put in all the materials, 14 pages, I put materials in. I'm going to talk you through it, but you'll be able to get this on YouTube or on Facebook at the same time. So here we go. So this is the, the watercolour palette. I've got two people on now. I've gone over this for the last 10 minutes, but obviously nobody could hear. Hi Malcolm, yes I can see you there now. Right, so on this uh, thing here, this is my palette. This top six colours here are the colours I've always used and I, I use these always for English type landscapes. So your paint's grey and your yellow ochre, as I've said loud and clear, thank you. Your paint's grey and your yellow ochre, there's everybody pipping from different angles make great stonework if you if you watch the stairs painting yesterday or the, yes yesterday you'll have seen how i use paint grip by sort of dragging it down with a brush broken and then dragging the yellow walker across and letting them just bleed bleed together and stuff hi margaret you're right so paint grey yellow walker yet they're definite for a good palette that gets an english typical stone now we moved down burnt sienna and french ultramarine these two combined make lovely greys. You can get like go from a brownish grey to a bluish grey. But these are brilliant in skies. They, they get some nice clouds, nice effects. And the beauty of them too is if you don't over mix them in the, in the palette, so if you just sort of put them together very loosely on your palette in, in your trough with water and then wash them on onto your paper, you'll find that they granulate as they dry quite nice because the, the burnt sienna separates slightly from the French ultramarine and it gives a sort of a, gl a shimmer to the to the sky. It's, it's very nice, but then with the colours that you want there. Uh, yes, good Margaret, I'm glad you're all right. Right, down to this one, lamp black. People say don't use lamp black or any black. Now I only use it for, for trees. I use it for winter trees and we'll explain that on another picture on, on doing winter trees where after you've painted with lamp black and you wet it, it fuzzes a little bit so that you get a suggestion of finer branches. But on a summer tree, lamp black mixed with cadmium yellow or new gamboge make lovely summer dark greens. You, 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 you can't get a green that does that. It, it makes a nice. If you just used a green, say you used a hookah's green and painted a tree, it would be one colour. Mixing a lamp black with a bit of yellow loosely, you get a variation in the tree. Now, New Gamboge was always my yellow, but the last year or so they've changed the formula and it's gone a little bit weirder. Um, if you can get some, try it. Cadmium yellow if you can't. But them, them two colours, nice greens. Now, whoop, what happened? Something happened there. Something went wrong. Yeah, hang fire, I'll catch you up. Why have we gone wrong? Right, I've managed to drag the picture back in again. I'm making the right mess of this, but I'm not going over it again. I've been over it for five times. Right, this is the colours. We've, we've dealt with the colours on the on my palette. We're now going to look at the, the particular type. So you can get tubes. They're watercolour pencils. I, I don't really use them much. I, I have used them, but I don't I don't use them now. 
but if you wanted to actually I suppose if you're going out traveling or on holiday you could use watercolor pencils that way you could sort of sketch in your scenes and then just run a bit of water into them later and you get a softness to them but mainly it's pans or tubes now when I first started I used tube uh, pans uh, they're not the, the cheap little pans that you could get from I don't know W Smiths or toy shops or anything whereas if you if you got them you'd be making your brush go like mad trying to get some paint out of them these are pure pigment they're still the same quality as these in in the pan but in a harder surface and I used them all the time uh, work them what, what what I normally do is, is sort of wet them wet them beforehand so that the paint starts to soften actually some of my art class people have a little a little spray bottle of water and they'll spray their palette before they start so that it softens the paint now I, that's all I ever use but lately I've been getting tubes as well the main reason for the tube the main reason I never used tubes was, be, was because it they were if you squeezed them out and you dipped your brush in sometimes you would pick up too much pigment too too soft paint and it would go on the paper too strong so I stopped using them and I used these but gradually I've started going back to these and all I do is when one of these gets empty I squeeze some some of this into there and then that fills it up I allow it to harden a bit and you, you've got a, the same sort of idea these I'll go back onto this bottom screen to show you the paint so these are these are the paints here that I use so that's the pans that's your pans there and the, the, a nice sort of soft color that, that's a full pan you can get half pans as well some of you some of your sets come with half pans some with full and then that's your tube so that that's a tube of watercolor paper um, that's a Snellia very nice watercolors a French make but very nice what goes this is you get Winsor and Newton but I'm going to list out all that in this PDF file this is Daniel Smith these are more expensive watercolors because the the using pure pigments they are, they are quite expensive well I'm saying expensive they're about eight to twelve pounds something like that depending on what strength of color you get you can though if you wanted to try them you can get smaller sets like a smaller tube that's Daniel Smith and what they also do if you go to one of the the websites like Jackson Art or Ken Bromley they tend to have some like sample sets which are a, a bit cheaper so you can maybe get a sample set with a few of them in and they're a bit cheaper but that's what I use I use Winder and Newton as well but I'll go through them so we'll go back to the um, back to the brochure wait a sec we're going back to the brochure there we go oh god not that one that one there we go I'll get there eventually by the time this three months over I'll be brilliant at this so that's your paints and you can try that so we'll go on to this next page and this is what I've just been explaining the different types of paint so a lot of the manufacturers all of them apart from Daniel Smith I think have a student and artist range the difference being in the quality so the students are cheaper but the pigments aren't as uh, aren't as aren't as good a quality as the artists one um, you can you can find that the students quality are all right if you're using yellow orcas and burnt siennas they're okay but be careful when you're going up up to more like reds crimsons or whatever because they could be they could fade in the students colors always check the colors to see how light fast they are so you, you don't want your masterpiece to fade I've, my color palette's what i've showed you but i'm also just dabbling around more with daniel smith's uh, quinacridone magenta now and then these can be used for accents in Medi Mediterranean now if you wanted to try um, Daniel Smith's paints you go to um, Jackson Art and you can go down to Daniel Smith's and what what they produced is it costs you a little bit of money but it's not not exorbitant but you can go to a page and you can get these Daniel Smith's sample colors like this they do a, a set of a set like that so you've got all the colors that they produced in these little dots of color the dots of pure paint all these looking bigger because I've actually wet them to see what they look like so you can get these dots and you can just water into them and, and get an idea of what the strength of the colors are so you've got you've got all these the nice blueies the greens yellow orcas you've got your brighter yellows and you've got some of your 
greys. You've got some weird colours here like uh, dual lapis sunlight or or in interference blue. I, I I can't figure out when I'd ever need them. Or try try decent copper. It's worth a try if you want to. But you can see and that way if you decided you wanted colours for your um, or your flowers or something a bit more exotic you can do what's also good about these colors is underneath each one they have a code number like one two y and if you've got the bottom of each sheet it tells you what one two y means so it's all to do with how much staining it is how much granulation you'll get the transparency of it so every color in the daniel smith range has a guide at the bottom on light fasteners how good they are for light fasteners so that that there it Go to, I'm sure it's on Jackson Art Online, it might be on Ken Bromley. Go into the Daniel Smith section of paints and you can get them colours there. And you can try them out. There's, I think they've got a, a, quite a wide range of colours, so you can try them out and see what, the, see what they look like. So right, we'll go back onto the pictures now. So you've got, got all the Daniel Smiths. They're fairly pricey, but you wouldn't use... Uh, if you go for the more like... Ex like the exotic colours you can get a small tube because you won't need a lot right next page and that's that's what, what I've just been on about tubes or pans earlier on so I've written it down here for you so you can have a look at the, the writing about it what I've just been saying but you can have a look at it Daniel Smith have the colour charts that's what I've been saying so we'll go on to the next page now and these what I've done now is put three or four pages up of of companies that make paints for you so Winsor and Newton are the are the, the regular ones the, the boys that have been around a long long time and they make a range of professional watercolors tubes and they've got a color chart that you can get um, I've used Winsor and Newton for years so all all the information is on there on that one Daniel Smith's I've just explained there they use the pure pigment there's a whole articles on their their co there's a pack that Daniel Smith do um, wait a second I'm not doing that again there's a pack that Daniel Smith do that sample pack and it, it, it they, they quite quite a reasonable price so they just little the little tubes like the five millet and they have it, all these colors in New Gamboge, Quinsardine Rose colors I've never heard of but I sent for a pack of them as a sample and they really are nice colours so you can have a look for them. So you've got them. Uh, then the Sennelia, I showed you the Sennelia tube. Again you can get a sample pack of Sennelias like five five colours in uh, which is lemon yellow, reds, ultramarine, Chinese orange. Now I've, I've used that, it's, it is a lovely colour, really deep orangey colour. It would look nice in sunset. And then Payne's Grey, which is a colour we use all the time. So there's more information for you to read there. I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to show you a sample. And Winsor and Newton also make, as, as well as I said, as a professional, they make some student sets, which is these. Now, they've got this on offer at the moment, Winsor and Newton. So if you go to one of the online sites and click, click into Winsor and Newton, they've got a, a collection, a gift set like that, of 12 colours. I don't know, Malcolm, how much the samples are on on Daniel Smith. I should have checked, um, but you can go to you can go to Jackson Art Online or or, or Ken Bromley. Click under the Daniel Smith section, and you'll find it. These ones here, the Winsor Newton cotton set, you're getting twelve colours for eleven ninety nine. So you, you, I don't know if you're getting twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You might be getting twelve colours. The recommended price of all these colours is £31 odd and you get these for 12 quid. And they're, they're nice, they, they are right for, for painting, they, they've got a nice quality to them. So that's the Winsor Newton student colours. So these are your suppliers. So there's the Jackson Art, that's their website, just there, jacksonart.com. Ken Bromley, I get a lot of the paper and stuff off them. Uh, artsupplies.co.uk is their website. Now a lot, I know quite a few of me... Uh, Art classes are, are in the Society for All Artists, and that says say.co.uk, and that is my fault. That's a spelling mistake. It should be S-A-A. -A. I will alter that, but that's what it should be, S-A-A. -A. And then there's Art Discount, another online company, Cass Art. There's Hobby Crafts. Now, if, if you're local shops, Darlington Art Shop is a good shop for all your materials, but you might, it depends on where you're at. If you're in Newcastle or anywhere, there's plenty of art shops. 
it all depends on whether they open now at this stage of the game but these are all still supplying online and you can get them delivered straight to your door right so that's the suppliers now pallets you need a you need a watercolor palette now i've got these i've got all of these palettes um i've got a bulletproof one as well bulletproof glass it's made from which is similar to that one i don't know why it's bulletproof but there you go um that one i use wait a second i'll just go over them i use that one a lot it has very deep pans for your water so you can get plenty of washes in there to work this one they've got pallets at the side and here reservoirs to put in a lot of paints not that you'll ever need that many paints but i suppose if you wanted to not contaminate them you could squeeze one color in there leave a gap squeeze another color leave it up so you're spreading them out a bit uh, but that's a, a good mixing area that's the bulletproof one i've got a massive one at, at home the studio one but uh, it it's really too big to do anything with and that one is a travel palette you can use that i'll show it in a second you can use that if you're um if you outside and just want to paint you can you've got a, it's got a ring underneath for holding your finger putting your finger in and you've got a lot of mixing area here little wells here and your paints go in there i'll actually show you these palettes now now they're not as clean as that i know some of my art class can keep them clean but i cannot keep them clean i'll show you these palettes now so that that is my palette the one at the top with the, the plenty of room for water in there and my paints are in there i sort of have them in in there depending on what i want so i've got french ultramarine and burnt siennas in there paints creates a bit of yellow orchid it's a nice clean palette you've got to keep a palette clean this is this is greys blacks reds yellow orchid cadmium yellow and the beauty of this is you can get plenty of paint plenty of water into here you can have a nice watery wash you can have thicker paint by dipping into there so you can get stronger paint and then you can sort of put a little bit stronger paint in one corner so i use that a lot i've got one at home here and i've got one down the art gallery when i do the art classes so i'll put that one to one side um on fire now this one this is a, a this has actually got colors in this is a, a Stuart sample set of colors um I've, i don't use any of these all of these but he, he had such a good deal on i think they were about 30 35 pound for a full set and these are pure watercolor they are top quality watercolors and he, he he's brag on his websites if you go to if you go to Stuart sample not sample Stuart sample go to the website you can get this downloaded it comes with mixing areas it comes with another separate mixing area but i've lost it but the colors are, are really pure and you've got some real nice colors if you if you, especially if you want to do flowers you've got some lovely pinks and they do come out wait a second i'll just wet my brush and get a bit of paper a second one second sorry about that so i'll just wet my brush and you can get some real nice colors here so you can water because they're creamy so they work nice so you can put in some nice washes different strengths so you can get a nice nice strong resi like that so you've got some real can you see that the, the quality they, they really are nice he does make nice watercolors he's the guy there's there's a company that made uh, or a, a, a company made the blackest black you can get it, it's 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 apparently what's used on airplanes it's a black pigment that's so dense that you can't you can't see any light coming from it and some artist i don't mention his name bought all of it up he won't allow any other artist to use it he bought the whole range right up and won't allow anybody else to use it so this guy here this Stuart sample made a black very similar and you can get that it's not in here it's called the black blackest black as well and you can get that at top and it is really dense black if you wanted a dense black that is he sells it to anybody apart from the artist who bought all the others up his brag is he makes the pinkiest pinks and the yellowest yellow. he, they are they are look at the way that's just drying nice nice bloom to it so that's Stuart sample colors they're not expensive if you look at how many colors you've got one two three four by one two three four five six seven eight nine you've got 36 colors there for about the same price in pounds 
and they are quality paints. I, I, I use them when I'm painting something smaller. Not so much when I'm doing a big painting. I use tubes when I'm doing a big painting. But that, that's a nice one. That, that is Stuart Semple. Again, it'll all be on the on the uh, the video that you can see. Now, going to the, the other palette, the travel palette, the one I showed you. This is the travel palette. This is, wait a second, I'll just flick back to it. So that's the one I showed you. That one I've got, that one I've got, and I won't show you them because they're absolutely filthy. That one there is the one I'm going to show you now that I've just got. And that's a travel palette. So it opens up like a clover leaf, so it opens up like that. Then that pad opens that way. And then that pad opens, wait a second, this way, hinges out, they're all hinged. And another mixing area hope opens that way. And underneath, you haven't got a hole, you used to have. You can get all of it like that. Oh, there, see that bit there? That, there's no colour there, that's a bit for sort of holding and resting your finger on so that you're not in the paints. And you can lift you can lift these paints out of here if you if you decide you want to clean it. You can lift the whole thing out and you can turn that round if you're right-handed or left-handed so you can mix it and turn it round. And then you've got plenty of room for a reservoir of water in here and plenty of mixing areas. Mixing areas here, plenty. So you can get all your colour. And these, these are all um, Daniel Smith's colours. So these are strong colours, pure colours. And I've got quite a few greys in there as well. So that's a water colour. And it all folds up nicely, so it folds up like that. It's sort of a hinged feel, like that, like that. And then the lid goes on like that and that's called the clover leaf not cheap about 40 odd pounds i think that but you can get cheaper ones there are if you go onto the websites and look for travel palette or anything like that you can get them you can there's a bloke actually makes palettes and they're made out of brass they're handmade out of brass and they're about a thousand pounds and there's a waiting list of about three years for you to get one and I don't really see the advantage of it, because with me, they'd be mucky as anything in seconds. Now, if you're rich and you want something that you can show off but not actually use, this bloke makes these expensive palettes. So feel free to get one if you want one, but don't, uh, don't blame me if your wife kicks you out. Right, so that's the watercolour palettes. So I'll move on to the next one, which is brushes. Now there's many types of brushes. You get the the cheaper synthetic brushes, uh, which are still nice for using on smaller ones and cheaper. And then you can go up to the expensive Kalinsky sables. I do suggest, no matter what you do, if you can afford to get a, a Kalinsky sable, get a sort of a number eight immediate because you'll use it all the time. And it's it's the one I use regularly. If you watch me paintings, you'll see me using the Kalinsky sable or doing the the bigger washes, etc. And there's all sorts of ranges. Uh, Winsor & Newton make all sorts of brushes from synthetics up to their Series 10, Series 7. The Series 7, that, is actually named after um, Queen Victoria. Because Queen Victoria only had number 7 brushes. She loved them, she had them made specially. So Winsor & Newton have made these Series 7. Pricey, but I find... To be quite honest, they're a bit long. A bit that's not not in a series seven, but I think series seven are a bit long in the brush for for like the smaller work. Uh, they just move around a bit too much. I don't know. Pro Art they make a nice range of cheaper synthetic brushes, right from small ones up to bigger ones. Da Vinci, all these you can find on the websites, the, the travel places, the um, Ken Bromleys and Jackson Art. Da Vinci, I use these a lot, and I use a Skoda. The nice, real nice uh, sable brushes, Clancy. Now, Isabel, a great brush as well, and they make mops. Now, a mop is a brush, I'll show it in a second. A mop is a brush that actually, in fact, I'll show you it now. A mop is a brush that makes good quality paint. So these these are the, 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 the brushes I use. That, that's, um, that one's in the Skoda, I think. And these are lovely brushes. They hold water nice, and they keep the spring. I've had these a few years. In fact, one brush I had lasted me oh, 20 years. They get one get one of these 
and you, you won't need to change it obviously get some smaller brushes here and there different sizes but this is brilliant for just dragging across the paper and leave and it just leaves little little trails behind and that one now the mop the mop brush is this now this brush this one's a Skoda but you can get them from Isabir and other places I've got two or three of these this is a bit loose for some reason this holds a lot of water it holds in fact I'll get some water I'll get some water it's not clean water because I've just been painting but that there can soak up the water and once you've got it soaked up with water it can make nice points it can you can shape it to a nice point you can even paint with a point like that you can even paint with a point with that and it holds lots of water or you can lay it on nice and thick what i tend to do i use this for if i'm doing a looser painting a bigger looser painting i use this because i can fill it with water i can dip uh, into the color and pick up some color and then i can dip the point into maybe another color say say i was using uh, French ultramarine fill it up and then dip the point into a bit of crimson and then when you drag it on you get a mixture it's it's, it's a real nice brush and they do a, a whole set of sizes these for what, whatever you want but that that's what a mop is it, it's such a it's like soaks everything up but you, you can you can shape it to a nice point and it also fills in so have a look the best thing to do is to go online and have a look at all the brushes and see see sort of what uh, what brushes you you like try a few different ones but this I find on the smaller the very fine brushes Oops, wait a second on the on the very fine brushes which is this one sorry I'll just nip back to that on this one it's not so critical getting uh, a sable or, or a synthetic one on these because they wear out that quick anyway these points so I, I think you're all right with the synthetic one as well so don't feel you need to buy there's not much difference in the price actually though when you get down to that sort of size your price starts to go up when you're going up to the bigger Kalinsky sables and going from say a number 10 to a number 12 can make a difference of 20 or 30 pounds so just just be aware of the brush. but have a look at them and see which ones you like now apart from them you can go online to rosemary's brush rosemary brushes they they make all sorts of ranges and they were i don't don't know now but they were a quite good reasonable price but they seem to have been took over by somebody it was just a lady who making these brushes and they were really cheap but now they've got a big catalog of all sorts of sizes so i don't know i bought some of them in a, a series 33 is what i advised my art class to get if they were getting some uh, you don't have to buy the whole series you, you pick what size you want the best thing to do if you're going to buy a set of brushes get a, a double zero get a double zero get say a number one or two a number four a number six or seven or something like that number eight a number ten that's all you need you can get real big ones but i don't think you're going to need them so there's there's where you get your brushes jackson art rosemary brushes all all the brushes i've described are on jackson art or ken bromley um you can get them at the art shop at darlington mops are the ones as well mops are good is a beer these lot here is a beer they make good ones so look at the brushes and get them now what color paper there's lots of papers you can use i've used them all tried all sorts um but i've gone to archer's rough 300 pound for my larger pins I found no matter what paper I tried, Archer's Rough worked best for me, which is the, the paper, which is the paper with a second. If I can reach it without uh, the mic ripping off. There you go. One second, I'm nearly I'm nearly there. Just I've walked away from this table before with a mic attached and it's thrown it all over. So th that's the paper, that's the picture we did the last couple of days. So that that paper there is the arches three in a row. and I don't know if you can see the texture. You can see the texture in the in the watermark just there. It's a it's a rough paper and it gives you some nice techniques. You can you can sort of drag the brush across and leave sparkling bits of white. So arches is the paper I've used mainly all the time. Um, in the art classes we we use 140 rough because I. I, I find that just to be a bit more reasonable on costs because they rough with the paper these these students they tear it about a bit 
uh, but that paper will, and that will handle anything scratching back or anything like that it's, it's good paper the best thing to do is to try different ones now if you want a different surface arches make a not finish which means it hasn't been hasn't been pressed and it's sort of in between pressed and rough and it's still a nice paper not as rough as that but still nice paper good for landscape the hot press is what you want it's a really smooth paper you paint flowers or or if you want more delicate subjects or anything there's other papers saunders waterford fabriano winsor newton make a nice paper cheap on the cheaper side is bockingford that's in the cheaper bracket but these papers are quality papers as well I would suggest you try and get a, a, a little pad of each or a sheet of each if you, if you go to the art shop you should probably buy a sheet of each if they've got them in and try them out the, the best thing to do really is get a sheet with just generally 30 by uh, 22 inches cut it up into eighths and try different paintings on each one and see what it works out like or buy little pads try them out I've tried them all but I've always come back to Archer's Roof I, I used to I used to order paper and try it out from um, from up the lakes a different type of paper but again nothing can beat that stuff that arches when you get going so that's that's the paper so I think we've covered covered everything you need on the on that sort of line so the thing is have a look at that I'll save that PDF file this whole video so I'll, I'll leave it as a video that way people can listen to what I'm saying and have a look at the pictures as well so I'll leave it like that and I'll save it to the um, to the Facebook and I'll send it up to YouTube as well so that you can watch it watch it up there and uh, it will help you just pick and choose what you want it gives you an idea before because I, I think we're going to be here for quite a while so I think that if you can get yourself some papers try them out and get a few little brushes try them out don't go mad and try unless you've got some money don't feel the need to get just experiment but if you do start enjoying the watercolors try and treat yourself to a, a decent sized Kalinsky sable you'll find it it is worth it in the long run it'll last you a long time on the cheaper ones synthetic brushes experiment with the colors but don't expect to get good uh, good paintings if you're buying the cheap the cheap palettes with really hard as any painting they just like plastic them get something a bit reasonable in the pans or half pans or tubes go on the site and have a look have a look at the samples that you'll find that most of the companies make some kind of sample packs you can use you don't need white paint on watercolors we use the white of the paper to get the white so you can see that the, the white of the paper is better than any white paint you can get so you don't need any white paint um, I suppose what you can use is masking fluid if you need to get some white to protect them and gouache white works but even when you use gouache white it still doesn't give you the white back that if you manage to let the paper alone anyway have a look have a look have a try out of different things experiment and then we'll get some more paintings done and we're also going to do I'll show you on you pour paper later on and I'm going to try and do some pastels and acrylics over the next weeks or so uh, but tomorrow it's a watercolour and it's a zebra or zebras because there's two of them so if you tune in tomorrow at half past ten I'll be doing zebras okay thanks very much see you later bye